There seems to be a growing trend in landscape photography that if you are a landscape photographer, this is what your reality day to day looks like. This instead is the reality of our day to day life. It's 4 a.m., it's the end of fall. I've been photographing for months now and I'm a bit run ragged, which sounds great to some. And yeah, it is to a point. I love going out and photographing, but I'm not always photographing for myself. I'm a bit drained physically, mentally, creatively. I don't really want to pick up my camera right now, but I'm going out to wrap up the fall season. And this right here, this moment and moments like these is why I decided to make this video to get a lot of different photographers giving you their input on what life as a landscape photographer is actually like. Okay, so you want to know about the truth of the life of a landscape photographer. So I'm guessing what you mean by that, David, is uh, a professional landscape photographer, someone who's decided to pick this up as a career choice. Uh, so if that's the case, well, the truth is it, it's, uh, it's hard. It's a hard life. It's definitely not something that I would recommend if you want to make a living or if you've got a family and you need to spend a lot of time at home. Uh, it, it requires a lot of travel and anyone who's been self-employed or has run their own business knows that you really have to dedicate your entire life to get your business off the ground. It, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, I would not urge anybody to become a professional landscape photographer, uh, but for those of us who are maintaining that balance between our innate creativity and how we want to express ourselves versus the pressures of running a business and making money, that's the constant struggle. There are a lot of untruths about what's perceived as what a life of the landscape photographer is really all about. And, and I think it comes from, you know, yes, social media culture, but a lot of it comes from photographers like us not really speaking out of, of what it's like to be us. And the outside public sees the images we put out of amazing scenes. So it's perceived that we're constantly in front of mountainous sunrises and sunsets 24 seven when that's not the case, you know, predominantly I'm surrounded by this every single day. I'm answering emails, I'm editing photos, I'm talking with clients, uh, I'm editing vlogs that I've filmed out in the outdoors. And this becomes more of the surrounding than the other. Now that's not to say that I don't love being out in the outdoors, but you have to constantly manage your time and switch back and forth between the two so that when you do go out and photograph those things, you're not skipping out on other opportunities that do pay the bills when you are a photographer. I think the holy grail, like the ideal situation, is to not be a professional landscape photographer and somehow try and figure out a career or a job or a business that just gives you loads of free time. And if you can do that, you'll, you'll probably uh, be a bit more wealthy than if you decide to become a, a professional full-time uh, landscape photographer. So I always like to say that when you do become a landscape photographer full-time, and this is what I always tell people, that taking photos is, is still my part-time job. This, what, what's surrounding me right now, is really the full-time job of predominantly what you see right here. Hi, I'm Sarah Marino and I'm a full-time nature photographer based in southwestern Colorado. And my truth about landscape photography is that it can be a really, really lonely field. So I feel incredibly fortunate to be doing this full-time, to be writing and creating tutorials, running workshops, and being out photographing a lot. So I'll start this video with that premise is that I do feel really fortunate. But when I compare my experience as a full-time nature photographer to my experience in my previous profession, 
I just miss a lot of the social and collegial aspects that I had in my former profession. One of the most excruciating parts of being a landscape photographer and what makes life in general so difficult at times is the complete loneliness that you often feel when you are out in the field. And I know it, it's not just previous job related stuff or you know the loss of friends as you move from profession to profession but when you're a landscape photographer i feel like you know friends and people to share the experiences with are really few and far between you know instagram culture and social media makes you believe that we are seeing these incredible scenes and we are i'll, I'll grant you that but for the most part, we're experiencing these things completely by ourselves. We may have friends that we see, you know, to go shoot with once or twice a year, but the amount of times that we actually go out and photograph with people is, is few and far between. You know, predominantly, we're going out by ourselves. We're spending long mornings and evenings and multiple days traveling to different locations and trying to find the best light to continue creating content that, that we as photographers produce and share and, and sell as our work. And I think having that in the back of your mind of knowing that you're not really sharing the experience with anybody is really discouraging. Um, we love being out in the field. I love being out in the field. I love doing what I do. I love seeing different locations and experiencing the best light possible. But at the end of the day, when I wake up at four in the morning, and I know this is the same for a lot of my photography friends who are either married or who have kids now, we wake up three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, let's say we're just going out for a single day and we kiss our wife, we kiss our, our, our babies, our children, and we go out for the day and um, you know we may not be back by bedtime. So we miss out on a complete day with them. Even if you take your family with you to a location, they're hanging out in the hotel room the entire time. They're going to see the sights and having fun as a family, but you're out working, you're creating content, you're taking photos and um, it can be extremely lonely. It can cause a lot of anxiety. It can cause a lot of depression. I feel like it comes from a lot of different places. So geography, like when we only see each other once or twice a year, it's easy to build casual friendships, but it's really hard to build deep, long lasting personal relationships. I think the competitive nature of this field also has a lot to do with it, where I think this field, people see it as a zero sum game. Like if you get a workshop client, I don't get that workshop client. So that there's just necessary, there's just by the nature of the field, it's just more competitive. So that collaborative spirit that I experienced working in the nonprofit world just isn't as present in the photography world, just by the nature of of how people interact in terms of business. And then I think the, one of the final reasons is that I think it is probably harder for women, uh, where a lot of relationships in this field are built over things like trips, uh, where you're, you're out in nature with people and you build relationships over many days. And with women and men, it's just, and often, or in many cases, it's just weird to invite a woman to come along on that kind of trip if a lot of the people involved are married or in long-term relationships. There's just gender conventions in our culture that I think have, that make it kind of awkward for, for people to build relationships in those types of settings. So and that's one of the main places that people build relationships, it means that I'm, I sometimes feel very left out of that. Hi everybody. Thanks ever so much, David, for uh, giving me the opportunity to say a little bit on your on your video. Uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about uh, using your photography to make money, or even go as far as making a living out of photography or landscape photography in particular, which is what I do. Now, I've been doing photography professionally for a very long time now. 
And uh, one of the things that I always wished that I had done much sooner, earlier in my career, is uh, learn about business. Unfortunately, in photography, uh, as a business, it has absolutely nothing to do with your skill level as a photographer. Like any other profession that includes an artistic endeavor, uh, many of the people that are very skilled at what they do in the arts often uh, lack business skills. And it's unfortunate because a lot of those people end up getting passed over for uh, you know artists that know quite a bit more about uh, the business side of things, but their art is lacking. So it's generally falls to the people that, uh, that can uh, sell themselves and speak the loudest uh, that get noticed. The part of landscape photography that gets overlooked so many times is the business side. You, you do have to make money when, when you're a landscape photographer, especially if you're doing it full time to pay the bills, to support your family, uh, support your partner, you have to be able to recognize different parts of your business that are lacking, different parts that are doing well because you know print sales aren't what they used to be. Workshops can be disrupted with the pandemic. That's something that we've seen that this year in 2020 for the most part. And I think that the ability of recognizing trends in business and being able to sell things to people is difficult for photographers because it feels a little bit sleazy to us and it oftentimes even seems a little bit right-brained and that's not how we're all function. So the thing that I'd like to share about being a photographer that's, that's true for me is actually how little I go out and photograph these days. I think it's, you know, maybe assume that if you're doing photography, outdoor photography as your, your career, that you're just out taking photos every day. But the reality is, is that um, sometimes I go months without taking a photo. There's so much other, so many other things to do around the business. And also I'm just not always creatively motivated that way or in a place where I feel inspired to take photos. So I take photos when the opportunity is there, when I feel like it, and that's how I find I do my best work. And uh, when I'm not feeling it, I work on other parts of the business. It's very easy when you, when photography is your career and it's a full-time profession to worry about making money. Uh, obviously, we all need to make a living doing this and it's difficult. It's, it's, you know, with all our workshops getting canceled, it's been a very difficult year. But the reason I'm a landscape photographer is because it's something I have to do. The, the creative side, expressing myself, engaging with the landscape, seeing things that fascinating me, finding beauty in an ugly world. Uh, something David and I talked about a lot was a mental health side of things. I need to be in the landscape. I need to experience and to feel and to engage and switch off other things. Now, if that gets lost in the process, uh, then why am I doing this? I, I, you know, I could go back into banking or something like that. You know, it's I do this because I have to do this. So the thing that's the struggle, I guess, is balancing making a living and being true to our own, uh, well, why we do it in the first place, why we're passionate about it in the first place. Because if I sit uh, day after day after day in this soundproof box that I work in most of the time, if I spend too much time in here and not enough time out there, then the balance is lost. I'm not getting out of it what I need to get out of it. But we're such creative people that we see the world in a different way. It's extremely difficult for us to switch from one side of that brain to the other. If we go out and photograph, you know, an, an incredible scene and really focus on compositions and light theory and, and all these things that envelop, you know, art history for the most part and what your style is. And then we come back and we completely have to switch over to answering emails and talking to people about percentages and, and what's doing well and what's, do, what's not doing well. 
that can be a little bit unnerving at times and difficult to switch back and forth constantly. And it's overwhelming a lot of times and it's, it's energy draining a lot of times. Hey everybody, it's Josh Cripps here. And David asked me to record a quick video about what it's really like, what the truth of life is like as a landscape photographer. And I've thought about this for a while now, and I wasn't really sure how to answer this question. Do I talk about the business side? Do I talk about the personal side? Do I talk about the relationships? Do I talk about the money? There's so much that really goes on in, in living your life this way. And at the end, what I really decided was, what I realized is, there's only one thing that you need to understand about being a full-time landscape photographer is that you never have any idea what to actually expect. I try to plan my life out as best as I can, but it never actually goes according to that plan. Probably one of the most overlooked parts of becoming a landscape photographer full-time is, is the fact that it's so unpredictable. You know, when I first started out, this was definitely something that I drastically overlooked. I probably planned to make money, I'm, at least I'm sure I did, but for the most part, I didn't make a, a dime for the first six months that I was doing it, and it put a lot of stress on me, and just that unpredictability was something that I wasn't prepared for. Not only with finances, like now that I've been in it for several years, you know, you try to have this budget at the beginning of the month that you have in mind, but is it actually going to come into play? Like, is that going to come to fruition or not? Because you never know exactly what or where that paycheck could be coming from at the end of the month. Um, so a lot of us are sole proprietors, a lot of us are contractors, a lot of us are LLCs, so you really have to think about, you can post a workshop, you can plan to pitch a project to somebody, but are people actually going to sign up for that workshop? Is that planning going to mean something when you do get sign up participants at the end of the day? Or is that person actually going to accept your pitch for X project. You know, I think predictability in a sense of going to a location when you are on assignment for something and you are getting paid to do something, the pressure of unpredictability kicks in a lot of times when the conditions don't play out where you are going to photograph or what you're going to photograph for. So you end up spending usually a lot more time than you thought you were going to in the field, in a location, which also means more time away from family and friends and more time away from home. So how long are you gonna be gone? Do you have to make flight arrangements and cancel flights and all that on the go? Not to mention, we're usually in places that there is no cell phone service and very little Wi-Fi. So how are you going to make those schedule changes when they do come up? So here we are, I'm planning to get this work done now, but you never again, you just never know what's gonna come up next. And, and that uncertainty is one of the fun things about being a landscape photographer, but it's also one of the stressful things about being a landscape photographer because you don't really know where your next paycheck is coming from. You don't really know uh, where your next trip is gonna be. You don't know what your next good photo is gonna be. You don't know if you're gonna have stuff to post to social media. You don't even know if you're gonna be in your own house next week. Unpredictability isn't just something that's month to month. We've seen in, in the year 2020, a pandemic completely ravage like how we typically make money as landscape photographers. So adaptability is also something to keep in mind, something that you have to be able to do as a landscape photographer and be able to, you know, the word for 2020 was really pivoting. How are you going to pivot from one plan to the next when those things just don't work out? So unpredictability isn't just short term, it's also long term as we've definitely seen in months past and years past, and even on the small scale and in weeks and days past. So this is like all of my stuff 
back here that I use for photography. And it's actually, it's surprising that it's in any shape that I can show on video. Cause I usually just come back from a trip and throw my stuff all over the floor or all over these shelves in here. And, um, you know, different cameras, different types of lenses, memory cards, uh, external drives, charging cables, and all this different stuff back here. You know, what's funny about this, I mean, I have like tripods just sitting everywhere on the floor. The majority of this stuff is for creating content for other people. It's not even for the most part creating content for me and my personal enjoyment of photography. When I started, I had this little camera here, a little 12 millimeter lens and this lens, and that's, that's all I use. But now, with the pressures of creating all this content, you invest in different lenses and, and tripods. And, you know, when I go out, I'm taking all of this gear out with me to film videos and create things that people are going to enjoy watching. As a landscape photographer, you kind of have this uh, obligation to constantly churn out content, whether it's stills, which I mean, that's, you know, first and foremost, that's what it's all about. That's what we love to do or whether it's vlogs or reviews or whatever it is, you kind of are obligated to just constantly churn out content. And so from an artistic point of view, you're not always satisfying your needs first. So you've got to, you've got to be able to accept that if you're going to take on this life as a landscape photographer. I can't sit here and tell you that it's not nice to be able to manage my own schedule and have the ability to decide, okay, this week I'm going to go here, this week I'm going to go here, um, you know, this event is happening, I'm going to go out this direction. That's fantastic. But when you get there, you're not always photographing for yourself. You may be photographing for a client, somebody else, and what they want you to produce for them, or you're producing something that honestly you may be tired of doing in that particular moment. You may just want to put everything else aside and just photograph what's in front of you to remind yourself of why you got into it. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I do to help me balance my enjoyment of photography versus why I love doing it as a profession is sometimes, you know, I just put everything down and I don't focus on the pressures of creating something. They're still there in the back of your mind, absolutely, but putting everything away and just photographing and just remembering why you, you love it in the first place and why you got into it. And while those moments are precious, they are few and far between and, and difficult to come by when you do have the pressures of content creation and churning out something that's going to help you earn an income down the road. Um, what's more important is your happiness. Uh, yes, I'm not rich. Uh, yes, I have absolutely zero time and this is pretty much all that I do. But I'm extremely happy because I do what I love. My, my career path is my passion. And so that's, that's always the trade-off. All of those other things that you sacrifice, uh, to me personally, they're worth it because I do what I love all of the time. And in all honesty, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. So I feel incredibly fortunate to be doing this full time, to be writing and creating tutorials, running workshops, and being out photographing a lot. The reason I'm a landscape photographer is because it's something I have to do. The, the creative side, expressing myself, engaging with the landscape, seeing things that fascinating me, finding beauty in an ugly world. Uh, something David and I talked about a lot was a mental health side of things. I need to be in the landscape. I need to experience and to feel and to engage and switch off other things. So here we are where it started, still tired, still exhausted. I don't want this to come across as I'm complaining about my life or we're all complaining about our lives. I love what I do. I know I can speak for everybody in this video that they also love what they do. It's why we do it. We have to do it. We can't do anything else. But there are times that 
it's draining. There are difficulties that come along with it. It's not going out and shooting epic light every single day of the year. It's not all joy. And I think that the idea around becoming a landscape photographer has become so popular because that's the idea that we are out photographing these things all the time. I want you to know after watching this, how we all feel about it. I want you to know that we love what we do, but the paradox about it all is that we also struggle with what we do so much on a daily basis. So if you are thinking about becoming a landscape photographer full-time, I would ask you to do a reality check with yourself. Are you the right personality type for it? Do you think it would fit your lifestyle? Do you think you would enjoy the business side? Do you think you would enjoy the photography side in general? There's a lot of pressure that goes with it. But again, I love what I do. I can't do anything else. And I would really struggle to think of what my life would be like without photography. So I hope that is insightful in any way for somebody watching this video, that being a landscape photographer is Man, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. The one thing I can guarantee about it is it's completely unexpected all the time. Totally crazy. So, all right, guys. Take care.